rest of this day uh, is uh, continuous for uh, uh, for uh, important uh, endocrinology uh, as part of internal medicine. And uh, you know, it's very important to go through the details of the endocrinology and at least you can grasp the basis of this subject since it interferes with the functions of the most body organs and systems. And that's why we'll start uh, with the, uh, its orchestra, I mean the pituitary gland. So uh, our agenda of this day is pituitary gland. Uh, its anatomy, its uh, biology and development, and its physiological functions. So also, the, but we will include in this talk the pathological disorders, both hypersecretory hyper states, that includes prolactinoma and acromegaly or gigantism before puberty. Uh, and then we go to hypopituitarism, hypofunctional states, including Ban, hypopituitarism, Kalman syndrome, and dwarfism. Let us start with the first point, the uh, pituitary gland, anatomically speaking, the gland is uh, about the size of the uh, tablet of paracetamol, 500 uh, gram, or uh, about uh, 600 milligram, half a gram, actually. This is a normal, but it may attain a very large size in pathology when there is a tumor in the gland. So. Uh, the location of the gland is very precise and important and you have, you, you have to know because uh, as you will see it is related to nearby important structures. The gland is located in the uh, cella torstica, uh, cella torstica, were, uh, were connected to the through the pituitary stalk to the hypothalamus, which is the dominating part of the uh, um, endocrinology, since it controls uh, through regulatory uh, hormones, with both the stimulatory and the inhibitory. Actually, through this way, there will be hyper um, pulsatile secretion of the pituitary gland hormones. So this connection with the hypothalamus uh, through supra, uh, through the pituitary stalk. So it is very important to know the uh, site as the cella torsica and the uh, connection with the hypothalamus through the pituitary stalk. And uh, the significance of this uh, through the function, through the blood supply uh, connection with the hypothalamus. And you will see the uh, a nearby structure or uh, nearby the pituitary gland, there are multiple vascular and neurological structures. So this is important to be uh, to be kept in mind because the neighborhood may be affected by a pathology in the gland itself. Uh, so the vascular uh, contribute the vascular uh, surrounding, including the cavernous sinus, which is very important. And the new, uh, neurological cranial nerves, uh, third cranial nerves, uh, for uh, the, the fourth cranial nerve, and the optochiasma is very important. And uh, primarily, it may be affected and compressed by a pathological tumor of the pituitary gland. So this is a, these are very important anatomy uh, in relation to the pituitary gland. No. And turn back to this. Uh, and embryologically, the gland is developed from the from Rathke's parathyroid patch, which is very important, and that's why in some states there will be developmental defects, and the patient may present with uh, Rathke's cyst and uh, hypofunctional states of the gland itself. You see, this is the uh, anatomy. And it is very clear uh, to, to know histology of the gland and microanatomy of the gland. The gland is composed of the two uh, lobes, the anterior lobe, or what's called is adenohypophysis, and the pituitary lobe called the neurohypophysis. 
the anterior lobe is in direct connection is in connection with the hypothalamus through vascular compartment through the superior hypophysal artery and there is a portal short limb uh, the uh, circulation vascular circulation uh, between the hypothalamus and the adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary gland and through the vascular compartment the regulatory hormones the hypothalamic regulatory hormones will do their function on the uh, adenohypophysis as you will see in the uh, physiology and uh, the study of physiology of the gland just a moment uh, then the neurohypophysis the neurohypo in direct continuity with the uh, hypothalamus through neurological interconnections. Uh, and that is why the name the neurohypophysis, the pituitary gland hypophysis. And the neuro is a neurological, while adeno is uh, adeno. Adeno means a gland. So the neurologic connection between the pituitary uh, lobe and the uh, hypothalamus through the supraoptic nuclei. So there is direct, not vascular, or, but it has a own blood supply uh, by the inferior hypophysial artery. I mean the uh, posterior lobe is supplied by blood supply through the inferior hypophysial artery, while the adenohypophysis through a superior hypophysial artery. So, cellulose is contiguous to vascular and the neurological structures, as we mentioned, cavernous sinus, cranial nerves, and optic chasma. Next, thus intracellular mass. And now, what will happen if there is a mass inside? and then outside, uh, whether intracellular or extracellular. Intracellular mass may have significant central mass effects and space occupying lesion in addition to their endocrinological impacts. So its a blood supply is derived from superior and inferior hypophysial artery, hypothalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary portal plexus provides a major blood supply for anterior pituitary gland, allowing reliable transmission of, of hypothalamic peptide, the stimulatory, the inhibitory uh, hypothalamic uh, peptides, and pulses because it secretes and it is secreted in pulses, pulsatile secretion, and that's why it is not a continuous uh, same uh, level of the hormone if you uh, test the blood supply, uh, the blood of the level of the hormone, without significant systemic dilution. So directly short limb between and connections uh, through portal circulation between the hypothalamus and the adenohypophysis, without going the to systemic circulations to be diluted. So straightforward. The peptide, hypothalamic peptide, uh, passes a short uh, distance, then uh, reaches its target, then the adenohypophysis, in, the, in order to do a systematic or inhibitory effect. So, uh, keep this important uh, loop in your mind. Post pituitary, uh, posterior pituitary lobe is directly innervated by hypothalamic neurons through pituitary stalk. Thus, and the anti-direct anti hormone or vasopressin and oxytocin, these are the hormone of the posterior lobe or neurohypophysis, are particularly sensitive to neurologic damage of pituitary stalk or hypothalamus because indirect and neurological connection. Next. Now. Before we go to the pituitary uh, gland, let us review the histology, the microanatomy of the gland. Uh, actually, we mentioned adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. The adenohypophysis is composed of uh, two types, of, actually three types of cells. The uh, eosinophilic cells, the basophilic cells, the null cells, the high. Uh, the eosinophilic cells, 
secretes two hormones, the uh, prolactin and the growth hormone, uh, sometimes mentioned melanocyte stimulating hormone, and the basophilic cells uh, secretes the other hormone. There are six hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. We mentioned two uh, from the eosinophilic cells, the rest is uh, are four uh, hormones. These include uh, the these are secreted from both basophilic cells, the ACTH, the TSEH. You know what are the, the what the, do the these mean? Uh, ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, and TSH, and we have LH, luteinizing hormone, follicular cell stimulating hormone. Uh, these are the four hormones that are important for regulation of the body physiology. So there are six hormones. The nerve cells actually previously it's uh, designed or is uh, speaking, uh, spoken of as uh, uh, non-functional. Actually, it may have function and it may secrete growth hormones or uh, prolactin. And in, uh, this is in physiology and even in pathology, it may secrete uh, gland, uh, may secrete uh, important hormones. The posterior lobe uh, secretes uh, vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone and the uh, oxytocin, which is important in delivery status uh, in women, actually. The pituitary, we go to the pathological disorders of the gland itself, which is the ox or castra of the ember. The gland, before we go to the pathology, actually, the gland uh, is orchestra means is controlling all the hormones of the body and some exceptional states uh, uh, that parathyroid gland is not related to the uh, not controlled by the uh, pituitary gland uh, some uh, part or zone glomerulose uh, in the in the superior inner, uh, uh, renal uh, gland uh, is not controlled primarily by the pituitary uh, gland. So there are exceptions. While the other uh, target or uh, endocrine glands are under control. How does this the control, how does this uh, okay? There is actually uh, access between the pituitary gland and the other glands. For example, uh, for con uh, for uh, demonstration, we have a pituitary uh, thyroid axis. The pituitary gland usually secretes TSH uh, when we are in need of thyroxine uh, hormone, uh, and this uh, TSH will stimulate the thyroid gland in order to synthesize and secrete and release the required hormone, and the thyroid hormone. So. If the thyroid hormone level is low in the blood, uh, in the circulation, so TSH will be over secreted in a pulsatile fashion, so thyroxine will be synthesized, released to the circulation to compensate the requirement. While the other way, uh, and the other way around, the, the, when there is the thyroid hormones are level T3, T4 low in the circulation, uh, high in the circulation, uh, what will happen? TSH will be suppressed. So this is a, a positive feedback mechanism and a negative feedback mechanism uh, by which or through which the pituitary gland can control the glands, the endocrine glands. So uh, it is very important to keep this in your mind. And uh, this uh, actually, this is applied uh, similarly to other glands, subarenal glands, the gonads, uh, or the other, except the pancreas gland, which is independent of the control of the pituitary gland. You see. So we go to the pathology. We have two groups of uh, pathologic disorders. That is related to accessory secretion, uh, excess or hypersecretory states, including the uh, hyperprolactinoma or hyperprolactinemia or prolactinoma and acromegaly, 
uh, or gigantism uh, when uh, it depends on the age of uh, growth hormone secretion. If it occurs after maturity, after uh, adulthood, it uh, will be manifested as acromegaly, while before puberty, it will be manifested as gigantism, as we will discuss the subject. And then, uh, high uh, antidiuretic hormone in the appropriate ABA secretion, uh, which uh, is uh, related to many causes, as you would see. This is an excess. While in deficient states, we have dwarfism and Kalman syndrome and diabetes insipidus, uh, central diabetes insipidus, because we have peripheral type of diabetes insipidus, as you know. Let us go to the first part of the problem, uh, hypersecretary state of the acromegaly. أو تنزليها تصعدها أكروميجلي أكروميجلي by definition by definition is excess secretion or hyper secretion of the acro or of the growth hormone and you see لا أرجع and this hyper secretion of growth hormone uh, after maturity, after uh, adulthood, uh, uh, will uh, do its effect uh, in the acral. Acral part means the skeletal uh, system, the uh, hands, the peripheral limbs, uh, I mean the upper limbs and the lower limbs. Uh, the, and that's why high growth hormone secretion, the cause on 90% of patients is related to pituitary tumor. It, which could be microadenoma or macroadenoma. It could, adenoma, pituitary adenoma, constitutes 10% of intracranial uh, tumors. Ashra bil miya min awram al dawam. Min al geoma, wa adha bin tafwa, glioma, astrocyte, tauma, wa others. So it constitutes 10% of intracerebral or intracranial tumors. Uh, and literally micro, either microadenoma or mic microadenoma less than 10 millimeter uh, in size, and macroadenoma, larger tumors. Next. The second cause of acromegaly is extra pituitary tumor, which constitutes rare, actually, is less than 1%, and it may be related to pancreatic islet cell tumor, and the other carcinoid tumor and the other. These extra pituitary tumor may secrete excess amount of a growth hormone and by this mechanism may induce acromegaly in adult human beings. And uh, high growth hormone releasing factor, uh, again, less than 1%, uh, which could be central like ganglioneuromas and peripheral we have, as you mentioned, uh, carcinoid tumor, bronchial, bronchial carcinoid tumor, bronchiatic islet cell tumor, cell lung, especially small cell lung cancer, adenocarcinoma, uh, and adenal adenoma, uh, medullary thyroid carcinoma, pheochrasma cytoma. These tumor, if you find them, and try to search uh, and dig for growth hormone assessment because maybe. Uh, reminding you, uh, acromegaly may be a manifestation of men type 1 or men type 2. In the hereditary problems characterized multiple by multiple endocrinal hyperplasia, as you see. So in men type 1 or Kerry's uh, syndrome, uh, you, there will be uh, pituitary adenoma, yani growth hormone excess, parathyroid hormone excess, and uh, pancreatic tumor, Zoranger, Ellenson syndrome, Gastrin, Collegiate, and uh, we are, these are important. So you have to secrete the family of this, of those patients, to uh, these organs. So keep in, in your mind uh, there is a cause of pituitary uh, adenoma 
part of multiple endocrine neoblastic, neoblastic disease. Clinically, how does a patient uh, with acromegaly uh, or between tumor present you? Usually, uh, they are asymptomatic. 10 years and more, they are indolent. They don't suffer, they don't complain. Before they uh, visit you and fill a blown picture of acromegaly, once acromegaly is required, uh, clear and fit, you can diagnose them on spot diagnosis on uh, phenotypic appearance, as we will see. So, uh, what are the clinical aspects? It may be indolent and often not clinically diagnosed for 10 years or more before visiting you. Next. Second, which system or organ are affected? Uh, usually the musculoskeletal systems and majority of the patients. There are acral or bony overgrowth results and frontal bruising, prognathism, uh, mandibular protrude bro bro of the bruise or frontal uh, aspect of the head. Uh, so also prognathism or protruding bro of the lower mandible, separation of the incisor, uh, of the lower incisor, separation between the teeth, and uh, as you see, uh, large uh, food, and uh, they uh, are uh, in need of large size shoes. Sometimes they are uh, difficult. They are uh, difficult in, in searching for and searching for. Uh, uh, size of the shoes that are uh, fit with them. Uh, high gloves, large gloves, so also the same feature. And uh, prognathism, mandibular enlargement, widened the space between lower incisor teeth, and giantism in children before uh, maturity, before 18 years. Linear growth, uh, linear growth, linear growth is stopped as you know, by age 18. You are of a normal body because there will be a physical closure, a physical blade closure, and that's why. Uh, metabolically, just to remind you, the growth hormone is uh, affecting uh, the important meta aspects of meta protein metabolism, uh, in which protein synthesis, and that's why soft tissue enlargement and uh, uh, what will happen to carbohydrate, carbohydrate intolerance, carbohydrate metabolism, impairment of carbohydrate, and there, uh, that's why impaired glucose serous test in patients in more than 40 percent, فقط واحد خمسة وعشرين من مية دبل أو ديابيتس ميلتس، and the effect is the antagonism, anti-insulin growth hormone is anti-insulin hormone. خطية هذا الانسولين كل أعداء مثل الأدوان الثلاثين على الأرع حقيقة أنتي إنسولين هرمون دار among them is acromegaly cortisol you know growth هرمون cortisol the all thyroxine all that's why there will be carbohydrate metabolism impaired and second as far as liver there will be lipolysis and that's why patient they have excessive uh, fatty acids in the circulation and the stored and as a, a triglyceride and a demonstration and in skeletal muscles. So also there are uh, the hormone, growth hormone I mean, affect the electrolyte and water. Uh, in which way there will be retention of sodium, potassium and water retention. Uh, and so also phosphate actually. Uh, these are very important to know the uh, the pathologic feature or manifestations and your patients and to explain how uh, does uh, do it's how does uh, uh, clear its manifestations are. Now, next, musculoskeletal and then soft tissue swelling results. All the system, all the body, all organs are enlarged including the, for example, the uh, nose, large nose, rhinophyme, they call the rhin, large tongue, which may cause obstructive sleep uh, apnea syndrome, large uh, thyroid gland, large heart, cardiomegaly, 
going to and real enlargement. So also hepatomegaly, multiple organs or soft tissue enlargement due to growth of more. So high heel pad thickness, high globe and the shoe size, ring tightening of the ring actually, and characteristic coarse facial wrinkling. Shoe from Ja'ad, Amar Minwichi. Facial wrinkling is a quite uh, manifest, uh, clear manifestation. Uh, besides the, the large flesh nodes, as we have mentioned, and hyperhidrosis and oily skin. This is a characteristic feature. You have to think of it, and you, it may give a high, uh, you a high index of suspicion for the diagnosis of the disease. Bad odor, uh, bad due to oily skin secretion and hyperhidrosis sweating. Actually, some patients may develop acanthosis nigricans and the skin tags. Acanthosis nigricans in the neck and the axilla, uh, these most area. Deep voice, kyphosis, and visceral omegaly, as you see, arthropathy and carpal tunnel syndrome, entrapment in neuropathy. The median nerves when come when uh, when come when it comes. Uh, uh, and uh, to the hand, it passes through the retinaculum and the fascia, flexor retinaculum. There are two types, superficial type or deep uh, flexor. There will be edema of these and the enlargement of soft tissue, so they will compress the nerve uh, when it passes uh, through this tunnel, and that's why. As the name is carbon tunnel syndrome, and usually in females they suffer from uh, agonizing pain, usually occurs at night, and uh, they can sleep uh, softly actually, and uh, it can occur in multiple causes like uh, pregnancy, uh, sometimes is a cause of it, uh, or uh, hemochromatosis and other. So, Carbon tunnel syndrome is maybe uh, uh, maybe a feature of acromegaly. Proximal myopathy and fatigue. They cannot compare. They cannot sit and they stand easily. And this is related to muscle involvement myopathy. So also cardiomyopathy is a feature. Next, the more uh, the most impact, the bad impact of. Acromegaly is on the cardiovascular system and is, uh, it may guide uh, the patient to death. Why? Because there will be athero augmented atherosclerosis or coronary heart disease, ischemic heart disease, cardiomyopathy, similar to uh, proximal myopathy, and erythemias, as you mentioned. So, also 30% of patients they may uh, of acromegalic patients are hypertensive. Uh, so there are three factors for cardiac failure, hypertension, uh, ischemic heart disease, and uh, myopathy, cardiomyopathy. So cardiac failure and erythema may be a cause of death in these patients. Uh, you see the LVH, systolic and diastolic destruction, and the high blood pressure in 30% of cases. There was and there will be upper airway obstruction, sleep apnea, 60% of patients, which will be related to large tongue. They, mis oh. they may swallow their large tongue uh, when, uh, when they are sleeping, and that's why they may die suffocated by this large tongue. And 60% of patients, you see, it's very high and may be lethal for patients, and may be victims uh, because of this obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Diabetes mellitus in 25%. For the last few days, uh, I have admitted in the ward for you, for demonstration, a patient with acromegaly, he presented because of that to me because of diabetes mellitus. And as you know, the, 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 due to insulin resistance, and you have to give large amounts of insulin to the side to diet regulation, and you have to do a meticulous job with him. He, uh, I kept him on insulin therapy, and he has been discharged by you actually, 
uh, or according to his responsibility. Once he, his blood sugar uh, came down, uh, he, go, he went home actually and I didn't see him. Uh, GI tract, so just remind you, this is a through impaired carbohydrate metabolism and majority of it, but only 10 to 25 percent become a real diabetic, general diabetes mellitus. These patients are genetically susceptible. Not every case or every patient with impaired carbohydrate uh, to, uh, metabolism will go into diabetes. Well, the genetics is susceptible. GI tract increases of colonic polyps and cancer. So that's why you have to think of this colonic cancer or malignancy uh, uh, acromy in acromegalic patients. And you are, and you are follow up, you have to think of this well. And you have to search for them before you, they go into malignancy. So it's very important uh, and very important point, practical point in your clinical aspects or your clinical dealing with these patients. Next. Mortality, the uh, uh, survival is 10% uh, reduced when compared to patients with non-betwitri tumor or uh, without acromegaly. 10% uh, reduction and, and a 10 years reduction in survival. And uh, there is increased three folds uh, related to cardiovascular system as we as we have mentioned cerebrovascular accidents CVA uh, due to center or mass effect space occupying lesion may be a cause of CVA and another cancer as you as we mentioned colonic cancer and respiratory failure uh, due to obstructive sleep apnea syndrome. Survival it is reduced by 10 years if excessive growth hormone is not controlled when compared to uh, compatible age, healthy individuals. Investigations, how can we uh, ascertain the diagnosis or confirm the diagnosis? Actually, clinical diagnosis is uh, quite important. And uh, you have to ascertain, since uh, the hormone affected the multiple tissues and that's why you have to look not only for the between the gland you have to look for the human body and its system uh, his system uh, in front of you so you have to check blood count anemia uh, as part of a chronic illness normal 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 chronic, normal cytic asr is again very important and may have uh, increased rbc polycythemic uh, fasting blood sugar and the blood urine, very important. Elevated, may both, and may have a real diabetes mellitus. General urine exam is very important. Hormonal assay, growth hormone. Is it wise to assess hormone, growth hormone, and single reading can give you a diagnosis, can settle diagnosis? If the answer easily, it will not settle the diagnosis. Why? Because there will be a pulsatile. So when you assess, it may be normal. And it does not exclude the presence of pituitary tumor or acromegal. So we, what do we mean in, in, in doctrinology? Uh, whenever there is a hyperfunctional state, you will do suppression test. And whenever you have hypofunctional, you do a stimulation test. In Anderson disease, we do stimulation test. We get ACTH infusion and we assess uh, steroid. And patients with Cushing syndrome, we do the Samethasone suppression test. You see, here the same thing. Uh, in patients with acromegaly, we do, there is excessive hyperfunction endocrine function instead. So there will be excess growth hormone. What do we suppress? This hormone by glucose, glucose, glucose suppression test. So, a growth hormone suppression test through oral glucose tolerance, and given 75 gram of glucose, and then we do serial. You check blood sugar, urine sugar, 
سو سو جروث هرمون بتدري كل ما يزيد البلاد شوجر كل ما يقلل الدروره يو سي عكس النورمال فيزيولوجي شباب افتهموها 20% ريمايند يو يو ار بوست جراجويت ومحاضرات معدل الاندر جراجويت Uh, uh, 20% of patients, acromegalic patients, are resistant to growth hormone suppression, glucose tolerance. 20% of they get paradoxical results. Keep it in mind because it may come you in uh, clinical uh, assessment of the questions. Uh, okay, next. Next. Then, this is the uh, 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 functional assessment. What do we have? Functional and the clinical. What do we have? Anatomical assessment for a patient to search for the cause. What is the type of the lesion present in the pituitary gland? How can we assess by simple scale X ray? Uh, and sometimes there is calcification, it can be vis uh, visible. So, also the anatomy may be seen by the X ray and uh, more. Helpful for anatomical diagnosis is brain CT scan or MRI can catch even a small lesion for the cell torsica. Just X ray is again for important for looking for cardiomegaly, for ultrasound for a thyroid gland to assess the goita, and ultrasound for the abdomen to assess for renal enlargement, kidney size, that, hepatomegaly, etc. And then visual barometry is important uh, for ophthalmologic, uh, ophthalmologic assessment of patients with hyperomegaly is mandatory. How, what, do we, what do you assess? You have to assess the visual field by visual barometry, and you have to do fundoscopy to look for retina, for papilledema, for example, and you have to examine the visual acuity of your patients with acromegaly because it may be impaired as you know there may be pressure on the optic chasm and uh, there was by manual by by temporal hemianopia so these are very important next now how can we help uh, what is the type of treatment that is uh, delivered for the patients. Treatment directed to the cause. Treat the cause. What is earlier diagnosis, the outcome is better. What is the cause accordingly? So a treatment, usually, as we mentioned, the tumor could be micro, could be macro adenomatic. So treatment, one of two, three, or combination of three things. First, surgical removal, either transcranial, or transesphenoidal surgery, or by uh, K knife. Now, uh, by uh, using uh, uterine destruction of the gland itself. This is important and recent uh, technology. So, surgery. Next, radiation, and third, medical treatment. For each, there is uh, there are indications and adverse effects. You know. Sometimes combination of treatment. Yeah, you may start with the radiation therapy before at, at the getting patient to surgery, to surgical treatment. Now, so beside to this, what will if you remove the gland by surgery, or if you destroy it by radiation, or you ablate it by medical therapy, what will you need? The patient will be in need for hormonal replacement therapy. Transiently, no, definitely permanent. So you have to replace your patient. And that's why you need, uh, this patient is in need of follow up uh, for the rest of uh, his life. It's very important to follow the recurrence of the illness and to follow the dose administration and the adjustment of the hormone. So supportive treatment and the treatment of the cause. To summarize, hormonal replacement therapy. These are very important. How do we achieve uh, treatment of the cause? As I have mentioned, by surgery. Uh, and there are centers 
for our experience and it will be surgery actually with good results and outcome and hormonal uh, so and radiation so also uh, six uh, jalsat six times uh, radiation sessions uh, they do follow up for for them and uh, then medical treatment if your patient refuses surgery or if your patient advance is advanced be, be uh, an operable case uh, or uh, distorted the gland by uh, radiation uh, sometimes uh, this treatment fail to give you uh, failure of this treatment you go to medical therapy conservative medical treatment is to give is to get what's called somatostatin somatostatin analog like bacteriotype like by injection what are the side effects our well, costing uh, not available in our center uh costing she funny effective yes this here are the b side effects pain our injection there will be pain at the site of injection above beside to that it has gi upset so we know the vomiting so diarrhea so flatulence so uh, sometimes is intoler intolerable uh, besides like there are uh, rare side effects uh, affecting uh, vision and uh, some psychological aspects of the, uh, of the drug uh, that's why you have to keep in this man so beside to bacteriotide or stomata and somatostatin analog we have uh, the uh, uh, gabagoli or dostinex and include the, all the traditional one bromocrypti or parodil uh, treatment Gabalgolin uh, or Dostinex uh, is characterized by long efficacy, long uh, duration of action. And uh, second, it causes a recession or regression of the tumor size. Uh, and so this is very important. Uh, you have to keep these two important. And uh, uh, you can give an uh, once per week or twice per week as uh, for patients but cost effectiveness again it has so many side effects like nausea vomiting postural hypertension uh, you have to keep in mind the traditional one is the bromocryptine or parodel which is present and available in, uh, in our uh, pharmacy of this hospital uh, bromocryptine uh, again uh, our power deal causes a regression of the size of the tumor but it is characterized by acting short duration of action and that's why again it is a side effect or uh, bad uh, uh, criteria in spite of that it may be helpful in short st uh, uh, in cases of a pregnancy with acromegaly pregnancy it is a treatment of choice a medical treatment of choice in patients with pregnancy because it does not affect the pregnancy it can be given a pregnancy safely reduces the size of the tumor and regress the uh, secretion of the growth hormone and even prolactin so it is important uh, besides that it has side effects nausea vomiting postural button and fainting and uh, they cannot tolerate this drug especially during the first two weeks of administration uh, you have to uh, uh, teach your patient you have to instruct your patient about the side effects in order not to uh, stop the drug yes and bit with adenoma we have mentioned this radiation which may result in late hypoglycemia huh? 10 percent or 10 to 20 percent of patients whom you were treated by uh, radiation may develop uh, hypopituitarism in the next coming 10 years. And it has a radiation, but I just need to within the course of 10 years, 
postal edition where the claimants are from my book. So tell us them sorry after the so you have to keep them under regular follow up as I, um, as we ha I have mentioned and because you have to uh, replace hormones. There are other hormones that we have mentioned in the brief and the initial in time of and the starting uh, talk about the structure. There are so many hormones, thyroxin, thyroxine, thyroid, you know, to reverse if you distort the gland, if you remove the gland by surgery, or if, uh, if you are related by radiation. Now, next. Surgical operative types, we have it, as I have mentioned, transesphenoidal root for large tumor and microadenoma, and the cure rate is 50%, you see, in experience, and, and 70% respectively. I mean, 50% in uh, microadenoma and transesphenoidal root, or a cure rate, which you get the class of endomia. Now, you write 50% or 70% respectively. Yeah, 70% of my children or my children are cured. Growth hormone will be normalized within an hour. You see, if you check the growth hormone after surgery or there will be, it will be normalized. It will be, it will go to normal. IGF, which are the uh, intermediary the, through which the growth hormone may do its own insulin like a growth hormone factor one, and uh, may return back to normal within three to four days. Recurrence of acromegaly several years after operation. There is a chance of recurrence less than 10%. Okay, hypopeterism occur in 15%. And like I should have remember, uh, and hypopituitarism following uh, occur in 15% of patients. Okay, next. Now, we have finished and covered acromegaly. Now, we covered the other, um, for uh, prolactinoma, as a Then we go prolactinoma, macum, excess. Vasopressin is the other entity of hypersecretary state, inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion. Sayada syndrome um, uh, is caused by, it has multiple causes, and you are key to keep them. It is present in the clinical practice, but usually we miss the, its diagnosis. We don't have a high index, index of suspicion of thinking of the well, so so many patients with pneumonia, lung cancer, meningitis, uh, so many things, so many patients, but we miss diagnosis of this syndrome. Uh, so causes uh, neoplasm uh, malignancy as lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, urinary bladder cancer, thymomas, and bronchial adenomas and carcinoid, all these are associated with uh, Sayada syndrome. Then infections, including pneumonias, uh, lung abscess, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, meningitis, and cephalitis. Then AIDS uh, may be a cause of Sayada syndrome. Neurological causes, the disseminated sclerosis or MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, guillain barre syndrome, hydrocephalus, and psychosis. All these may be associated with Sayada syndrome. Next, we have drugs, drug-induced excess secretion of ADH, include visopressin administration, uh, chlorobramamide, which is all the traditional uh, hypo, uh, uh, hypoglycemic drug or anti-glucose drug, uh, not used now. Vinicristine and saxophone, which are anti drugs. And uh, then we have tigritol and carbamazepine, which is uh, used for patients with epilepsy or used in patients with diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And nicotine, uh, smoking has a bad and uh, habit. Uh, tricyclic antidepressant, and we have monoamine oxidase inhibitors like imipradines and others. 
and then we have a head injury or a closed type and uh, open type uh, head injury may be associated with Sader syndrome. Vascular causes, CVA, cavernous sinus, sinus thrombosis, and metabolic sequelae like acute intermittent porphyria, bronchitis, manumotoris, uh, positive pressure ventilation may be associated with Sader syndrome. Next. Clinical features. How can we diagnose? Our end in the high index of suspicion. Think of Sayada syndrome. Think of it in the previous listed uh, clinical uh, diseases or pathologies. You have to. What will happen to the patient with Sayada? Excess antidiuretic. Either name denotes you know, uh, no diuresis. So there will be oliguria. You are not. When there is be uh, all the glory, what will happen? You know, urine output uh, ranges between 400 cc up to up to two liters and a half. Uh, we see all the glory before uh, yeah, less than 400 cc. From the same all the glory, she said urine osmolality and specific gravity. She said it. On a good choice, a concentrated urine. But I can see them in plasma osmolality, she said, they're diluted. If I say, a color osmolality, we say water retention. Uh, here we are, there will be a high water, low plasma osmolality, benumable urine axis. Uh, hyponatremia, which will give the patient multiple symptoms. Uh, they will suffer from headache. Uh, confusional state, anoxia, nausea and vomiting, drowsiness, coma, and uh, even it may progress to convulsions and death. So you have to treat your patient. Diagnosis is made by exclusion, uh, history, clinical examination, laboratory test, and through hyponatremia. Urine sodium excretion, plasma renin activity, plasma antidiuretic hormone assay is not of diagnostic health. And we check an antidiuretic. Our antibiotic is she thani. It does not mean. And the antidiuretic hormone assessment per se is not of help. You have to assess its function. Mafro. So we let Shunwa, Madam Ali, and the Christians away separation test. Which he moves away the other infusion when so will a separation test. Well, beside, what do you think? And how do you treatment of the cause? Next, treatment of the cause listed in front of you, and then elevation of the symptoms of a problem through the restriction of uh, fluid intake and insensible loss in the meat cc zayed in the urine output and give your patients hypertonic solution leash then circulation diluted at the same on each of its one has in compilers of rather isotonic saline أو هايبرتونيك سلاين في المفتور اختار بعد هايبرتونيك سلاين 3% سلاين سوليوشن for rapid alleviation of symptoms and help of patients next yes and the third marker or the third part of pituitary hyperfunction we mentioned acromegaly anti sciatic syndrome and we mentioned now prolactin excess of prolactin and the cause is prolactinoma. Again, micro prolactinoma and macro prolactinoma, uh, in which the tumor rests on or occurs or starts in eosinophilic cells of the pituitary gland of the adenohypospheres. So, physiological concepts, again, before I uh, give pathology, usually I acclimatize myself to give some physiological consideration and information in order to keep you uh, uh, keep you a background in order to accept the pathology. What are the physiological concepts of prolactin? It is a polypeptide hormone 
consists of of 18 amino acids, uh, 184 amino acids secreted from the adenohypophysis, anterior gland, pituitary gland. Its main function is related to lactation in women, and also it affects the menses or menstrual cycle. While in male, it may interfere with it may interfere with potency and it may be a cause of impotence as you will see but uh, impotence and the gynecomastia and in female we will see pathology physiological stimulatory effects of excessive prolactin are sleep pregnancy sexual intercourse or uh, contact not necessarily intercourse lactation and nipple stimulation whether by breast milking uh, breastfeeding or uh, stimulation by the husband and uh, and kebab or in married woman next pathological hypothalamic damage it would restore damage hypothyroidism chronic renal failure in 90% of patients. So, I said, I don't have I just remind you all hypothalamic hormones are secretory hormones except the one. Prolactin and a bit of And then, in hypothalamus, stimulate the pituitary gland, ma'ada, the zilha inhibitor factor for prolactin, and because it's not needed. Uh, in the usual circumstances. We don't need the product in hormone. So it is uh, sending puff, prolactin in a bit of So when there is, the mesh is obstructed or distorted or cut, I mean the pituitary stall is damaged by, tumor, by trauma, tumor, resection, surgery, what will happen? No buff, no prolactin, so there will be excessive prolactin. There will be hyperprolactin as it is uh, fixed in, uh, in front of patients with renal failure. Prolactin is secreted by uh, the kidney. So in patients with renal, renal failure, there will be hyperprolactin. There are so many hormones will be accumulated in circulation and patients with renal failure or parathyroid hormone, growth hormone, cortisol, thyroxine hormone, uh, insulin, and prolactin hormone, as uh, is mentioned here, and 90% of patients. Pharmacological causes of hyperprolactinemia. This include phenothiazines, antipsychotic drugs, uh, chloropromazine, uh, on the top of the list, or lagectin, Aldomate and reserve plus metoclopramide, and that's why it's replaced by motilium, it's more helpful uh, without the side effect. I'm reminding you all these uh, have extra pyramidal side effects, uh, oculogenic crisis, and morphine, uh, uh, trophic hormones, and TSH, thyroid releasing hormone, it is hypothalamic hormone or peptide and TSH is pituitary hormone, stimulatory hormone for a thyroid gland. Cymetidine or tegamin, again, is characterized by hyperolactinemia. And you may come across this fact in your case studies, presentation, and your postgraduate clinical examination. Next. Now, hyperolactinemia, how is how are the clinical features? How are the present? How is the presentation of the patients? Usually, patient present to you uh, uh, with the clinical features related to the cause, and with the clinical feature related to the syndrome of uh, or to excess uh, excess prolactin itself. Related to underlying cause, what are Special occupy region, adenoma, tumor, blood, malachal, HNA, nisbatan, ma'ala acromegy. Related to hyperprolactinemia per se, this is very important, which 
it's commonly, which commonly includes galactoria aminoria syndrome. Not necessarily causes galactoria and aminoria. Maybe one of them, either of them or both of them. So, uh, aminoria, this may give a clue to a diagnosis of pituitary adenoma or hypothalamic disease. Galactoria aminoria syndrome and uh, the, the, the woman may be infertile or sterile. And there are so many cases. Visit us in, in our private uh, clinic and in hospital and doctrine clinic. Women with aminoria, 10 to 40 percent of them have high prolactin, but 30 percent of women with both aminoria and galactoria have the Twitter tumor. You see, Mokulim Daga Jaws, the school Jaws and Daga. Musaya? Daga Kudabu, Waku Jaws, Waku Hatch. But Kul Jaws are a razum Daga. Okay? Tlatin Bilmia, I don't bet with the tumor. Like an Arbamin Bilmia, I don't galactoria aminoria syndrome. Next. So, aminoria is due to high. LH RH اللي هو hypothalamic stimulatory hormone اللي يطلع يحفز البتوتري gland يطلع LH و FSH which causing decrease LH and FSH accordingly affect the gonads الأوفري شو يطلع ما يطلع أوفم وما يطلع steroid hormone of the female اللي أقصد به استراديول which are not cheap so and then what will be the impact on uh, of uh, hyperprolactinemia, they will have gynecomastia and they are infertile, impotent. Impotence, 10% and infertility or hostility, 5% of cases. Prolactinoma as a cause of hyperprolactinemia pathological could be microadenoma in 90% of cases, female, and macroadenoma in 60% in men. So think of a space occupying lesion when it is macroadenoma. There will be feature of space occupying lesion, nausea, vomiting, increase in tracheal pressure, babylodema, or visual field disturbance, all you have to keep in your mind. How do you investigate patient for prolactinoma? Basal serum prolactin, and you have to know the normal value uh, before uh, checking this. If it is more than 100 nanogram, uh, it is suggested for uh, prolactinoma and CT scan again, anatomical diagnosis or MRI or scala X ray, MRI or scala, and then visual barometry, uh, visual field assessment, endoscopy uh, to assess for babylodine. Next. Next. And then treatment. For by the medial function, treatment of hyperprolactinemia is treatment of the cause. It has drugs that should do it. It has renal failure directed to treatment of renal failure. Dialysis, hemo, kidney transplant. You see, treatment now. Treatment if the cause is pituitary adenoma, micro or we mentioned either surgery, resection, or radiation or medical therapy in patients who are in operable. Which means what is applied to acromegaly is can be applied here in the same, in, uh, similarly. Now, medical treatment in those patients that are pregnant, Marat Sir pregnant, and treatment or they may achieve a pregnancy. And it is a cause of infertility, but it, uh, patients with uh, prolactinoma may achieve a pregnancy, may uh, succeed after treatment and become, become, become fertile and become pregnant. But you have not discontinued or medical therapy because once you discontinue treatment, the tumor will be very large in size, flare up, and it may affect the vision, the patient may become blind. So this is a very important practical point. Now, what is the type of medical therapy is given? As I have mentioned, carbigoline 
for uh, so much study, what we have mentioned. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, dopamine agonist in form of carbivalin, neuron acting, dostinex, and uh, bromocrotein, and we have talked about their function. Reminding you, uh, they decrease the size or they cause a recession of the tumor size and they decrease the level of the hormone after initial dose and uh, the, uh, the t level of the hormone and the tumor size may re uh, increase after stopping the medication or treatment. You see, this is the end of my talk for pituitary gland hyperfunctional state and I have covered the pathology, my three pathology. One is acromegaly and gigantism. And second is prolactinoma and uh, sequelae. And third, uh, Seade syndrome. And the next talk, I will uh, go to the other aspect of the gland, of the of gland function, hypofunctional status and uh, its causes and how do we deal with them. And thank you for your listening.